how to customize your settings in career saves because if we just load up a save here of career mode and press escape you can see that these settings are locked now there's a very easy thing to do like i say to override these settings so to do this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down here to the Windows. You can either click here or press the Windows key on your keyboard. And you go to search here and you're going to type in percent, which is the uh, shift and five on your keyboard. And we're going to type app, no space, data, and then another percent. And then this folder comes up, app data percent. Press enter on that one or click it. And you'll get this folder that comes up here. Uh, to go into your Stormworks folder, it's just down here near the bottom. Uh, so we're just going to open up the Stormworks, like I say, near the bottom. And go to Saves. And in here you can see I've got all of my saves in here. Now, if we go up to our Survival Game Playthrough, double click. And then you'll see here we have Script Data, Tiles, Vehicles, Scene, and TreeState.bin. Now, in script data, this is just some basic game stuff. You don't need to ever touch that, really. In tiles, these are all your islands. And I have a video on how to change your islands, which will be in the top right corner for you if you're interested. Uh, and going back here, we go to vehicles. And you can see this is just your, your vehicles that you've got really in the game. You don't really need to mess with that either. But the one we're interested in is scene. Now, there's a common problem people have here. Uh, if you want to edit this, usually people just double click it, right? But when you double click this, it's going to open up the internet and it's not going to be able to do anything. So instead, what we need to do is we need to go to scene, press right click, and then you'll see we've got open, edit, scan if you're using a Windows PC, share and open with. Now this is the one we're interested in here. We're going to go down to notepad and open that one up. And then we get this notepad here. I'm just going to close this down because we don't actually need the file anymore. We just need this notepad. So we're going to go to full screen here. And you can see at the top of the screen, if I just zoom in here, we've got a lot of settings. Now, I know this looks a little complicated at first glance, but it's very simple. Trust me. So here we go. We've got our, our difficulty here. You can set that to whatever you like, although one is usually just what we go with now if we go here to minute hour and day that's just how many hours and days have passed and minutes of course uh, and then weather we don't need to touch also because you can randomize that um, which is much better in career of course having random weather allows for much better gameplay we have our total playtime here and i'm not quite sure what this is although i believe it to be seconds it could be tick uh, don't really need to worry about that too much you don't need to change that at all and then we have total missions completed again you don't really need to touch this this is just kind of a stat tracker total missions failed of course same thing and then we've got total loot found uh, this is the amount of boxes that you found floating in the water or cr treasure crates at the bottom of the sea that give you money and then this one we don't really need to touch although you can do if you like it's just a stat tracker once again we have our currency here which is how much money you have in game very common one people like to edit and our research points which is of course what we use to buy upgrades and because it's a classic career save research points are what we use as kind of like the main currency sort of if you've played classic career you'll know what i mean and if you're playing standard career i would strongly advise playing classic career it is honestly much better um, and then we have is create character true basically just need that otherwise you aren't going to have your uh, pawn and that's kind of like what the character is doesn't really need explaining just don't mess with it uh, next up we have our third person set to false you can change this and this allows you to press tab in game to see third person of your character. Don't recommend doing that too much, but this next one I would recommend actually uh, setting this to true. It's false by default, but this one is really good because this allows you, it, you're always going to be in first person unless you sit down, you can press tab. And then when you sat down, you can see the vehicle in third person and that's very useful for this sort of game. Now the next thing, vehicle damage, I would of course set this to true. It's a pretty much key gameplay element, even though damage basically doesn't do any damage in game for some reason. I suppose it's for balancing, but it'll take hours and hours just to sink your boat from damage. So not really a lot of point of that. I hope they fix that, but even so, set it to true, it's, it's definitely better that way. Adds a bit of a challenge to the game. Uh, then we have player damage set to true. Definitely have this on if you're playing career, it's a must. This basically means if you, for example, swim into a propeller, you will die, basically. And if you freeze to death, you will die, you know. Uh, it's, it's those simple things like that. So I would definitely leave that as true. And then NPC damage, depending on the difficulty you want for the game. I like my games really hard if you've seen my Transport Fever Let's Play. 
you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, but I like my games hard, so I have this set to true. If you want it easy, you can set it to false, and this means your NPCs are never going to die. Uh, it's very easy, but uh, it, it's a thing you can do. And then we have sharks. So if you swim around in open and deep water, uh, the sharks shall come after you if you do not have a boat to swim towards and get away from the sharks. We've got our starting currency. Don't really need to touch that because this currency over here you can just mess with and it does the same thing. Fast travel, absolutely must, must, must leave that as false if you're playing career. It's really not fun uh, just being able to teleport around places and get whatever you want. So I would strongly, strongly advise leaving that on false. Teleport vehicle false. This one's not too bad. Uh, it's. I also have mine on false because it makes it a bit of a challenge, but you can set this one to true. It's not too bad. This one basically, if your ship sinks, you can press M and then click on the vehicle and take it back to the workbench so it gets fixed and you can respawn it. Again, it's just one of those things if you want to play on easy or hard mode. We've got rogue mode again. You don't need to worry about that. And then we have auto refuel. Now this one I like to leave off because this means there's a lot more stuff to do. You have to set up fuel systems for your boats to try and get it to a good speed, but also I like at least to, to do it safely. Um, so I would leave that one off absolutely. And basically auto refuel, it just means that your boat automatically refuels when you are in the workbench and spawn it in. Megalodon false. So the Megalodon here, if you set this to true, I like it on false because it's a bit too unbalanced. The Megalodon is very likely to spawn. It's about a 5% chance around there, I would say, uh, for this thing to spawn, which doesn't sound like a lot, but it is. It really is, because you'll be out in the ocean on a tiny boat and out of nowhere is this huge shark. Um, so I think for the time being, that's going to be set to false and you should do the same. Um, but you can leave it on if you want. It'll just sink your boats constantly. Uh, so I would say just leave that off. Then we have map show players. I like to leave this one off because this one here basically just on the map it will show where uh, the players icons are so if they're stuck somewhere you can see them exactly like on the map where they are their gps coordinates i don't like leaving that on because i like to be able to go oh someone's trapped here so how am i going to find them i've got to find them somehow okay let's get them to shoot a flare and then you know go from there um, so I, I like to leave that one off and i would recommend you guys do the same and then map show vehicles false is basically the exact same thing as show players, except it shows the vehicle as well, not the depth though, not the depth. It just shows where on the on the map it is. And then we have waypoints here. This again, uh, it's a very similar to map show vehicles, except the difference here is when you set a waypoint to a place, if you have this set to false, you can only see the waypoint on the map, not in the first person mode and set to true. There'll be a big marker on the horizon uh, the exact heading on which way you need to go and I would again leave that to false it makes for a much better gameplay. Show nameplates is a bit of an interesting one it really depends on what you're going for if you have a lot of people maybe leave this one on true but I have it on false because there's only three or four of us on my survival uh, career even playthrough and we kind of just know what each person's job is so we don't really need to know their names because we can just talk to them in the discord but it, it's really dependent on your game and either works it doesn't really change the difficulty maybe slightly easier when you have them set to true but not by a lot so it's really up to you with that one and the next one is the day night length now this one here is a very interesting number so if you want to set the day night to five minutes that's going to be 300 seconds if you want to set it to 15 minutes that's 900 seconds uh, and these are seconds of course right here uh, now that the, those are the most common ones that i see changed however the one i like to use the most is 86,400, and that is how many seconds are in a real life day and i think that makes for much better gameplay especially seen as though you can sleep so a lot of the time you aren't going to be it'll, it won't always be nighttime a lot of the time it'll be day because you'll sleep during the night to get missions and it makes I think at least a better gameplay I'd say. Uh, and then we have a sunrise and sunset. These are just the rotation of the light source which is the sun. And you'll see so we have 0.25 here. That is like the the fraction on the protractor of the sun rise and then you'll see here for the sunset it's uh, 0.7. And that's basically you will never need to touch that unless you're going for some sort of dystopian like alien and planet because that's just going to change some settings to do with the sun and how it rises and sets of course so really don't touch that and we have infinite money set to false of course there's absolutely no point in you playing career if you have that set to true um <laughs> going to creative menu here this is the one 
that a lot of people find useful. I like to have it off personally because I know I am not going to change the settings at all because once I have my settings, I just have my settings. I, and I can always come back to this menu. Uh, but for some people who want to change their settings around constantly, for example, you want to have like a, a one minute is like a, a calm waves and the next minute you're in a massive storm, then definitely set this one to true. But I think it's better on false because with false, you will have calm waves and then you have slight waves, then you have calm waves and then slight waves again and then calm waves. And then out of nowhere, you'll have a huge storm and you won't see it coming. And I think that makes for much better gameplay. You've got the base islands here and this is basically the island everyone's going to spawn on when they join the game for the first time. And this is the idea you need to change if you want to do that. Okay, so next up we have Unlock All Islands, which is another creative feature. Another thing I would strongly advise setting to false, because this makes for some good gameplay where you have to actually save up money to get the better island. So for example, you want to get the creative island, which has a modded dock and it costs a lot of money. Say you change the price for it and you change the size for it, like I showed you in that video I linked a minute ago top right corner you can still click the little eye and it'll come up um, you might want to have unlock all islands set to false because then you will go and sail off buy some crude sell the crude and then buy the island with the money and that's kind of the point of that next up we have infinite batteries and infinite fuel these are very very important at setting the difficulty if you want to build very simple builds at a very basic level if you're brand new to the game say and set infinite batteries and infinite fuel to true, then you will not have to worry about electricity or fuel, your boat will just go. Um, so that's very, very important. As long as you have your logic set up, you don't need like pipes going anywhere, apart from the pipe going to your actual propulsion systems. Now the next one here isn't quite as important as infinite fuel and infinite battery, but it's still up there with the difficulty changing stuff. Engine overheating is basically, uh, it's another one of these infinite fuels, except with this one, you still need your fuel and your batteries, of course, but you will also need to make a cooling system. Uh, and I have that one set to true because that makes everything a little bit harder and I love a challenge. We have no clip set to false, just just have that on, really. Why would you need no clip? I, I don't know. Why would you need no clip in a career? No clip, for anyone who doesn't know, is it enables you to be able to fly. Like, to go 747 speed as a player, yeah, uh, and go where you want. So, yeah, leave that as a false, although you can play around with it if you like. Um, and then we have clean up vehicle, which allows, if there's a lot of children, for example, saying in your server, and they're spawning a lot of unoptimized creations, link in the top corner to how to optimize your creations, um, then you will want to clean up those vehicles to clear the lag. So this feature, if you turn this on to true, will allow you to uh, clean up the whole map and get rid of every vehicle if there's quite a few spawned in. And um, we're getting near the end now. We have vehicle spawning set to true. This is very important if you want to, you guessed it, spawn a, <laughs> spawn a vehicle. Uh, and then we have photo mode, which is your camera mode, which I showed at the start. It's one of those three settings in the camera mode allows you to go in sort of a drone-like state. You can fly around, you can look around, but there's only a certain range that you can go in. There's a little sphere going around your character, an invisible sphere. And if you go towards the edge of that sphere, then it will stop the camera. So it's sort of like a no clip, except much, much better and career friendly. Now this one won't affect the uh, gameplay too much. It makes it very slightly easier in true, though it's barely anything. Like you might as well just leave it as true or false. It doesn't matter either way because it barely affects the gameplay. So that's up to you guys. We have a respawning set to false. I believe that's set to true by default. False is much better because it means if you die, you die. And there's actually a point to keeping people alive. Despawn on leave set to false. Uh, if you set this one to true, it will despawn the character. And if you set this to false, it will spawn and it will despawn the character. Um, well, it, actually, I'm not quite sure. It either unpossesses the character or despawns the character and respawns an NPC. Uh, I'm not sure about that one. I could be wrong either way. Um, but I think I'm pretty sh I'm more 80 20 on the way of saying it's an NPC that spawns when you leave if you set that one to, to false and I think it's better that way because it allows people to uh, be able to see where people logged out now please note if you move the NPC after somebody has logged out they will log in in the same place they logged out they won't they won't log in where you've moved the NPC and the NPC will despawn of course 
So there's a little note for you. We've got unlock all components. If you want to do career, then this is can necessarily leave this one as false because this is your uh, tier tree on your research and this allows you to unlock new things. And if you turn this to true, you've basically just completed the game. Congratulations. <laughs> Override weather is basically the thing from earlier, which allows you to change the intensity of storms and stuff like that. But again, no need to touch that. And then override time is the exact same thing, except without weather, it's time this time. So that's it for this video today, guys. I hope you found it interesting and useful as always. You can always press the subscribe button. So thanks again for watching, guys, and I'll hopefully see you in upcoming videos. Goodbye.